Hi, I'm Sanera Madani, and I'm a mom of two, a daughter of an immigrant and an unlikely entrepreneur who went from scaling an idea to a billion dollar business. Yes, a billion dollar business. Along the way, I learned that less than 2% of female founders ever hit 1 million in revenue. And I became obsessed on a mission to change that. I believe that there is so much gatekeeping in business knowledge and that we as female entrepreneurs should be learning from other female founders and leaders who have broken the statistics. Since I never went to CEO school, I've had to learn it all the hard way, but you shouldn't have to because we believe that you deserve to have it all. And honestly, nothing bad happens when women make more money. Grab a seat because class is officially in session. Welcome to CEO School. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the CEO School podcast. I'm your host, Sanira Madani, and we are just getting right to it. I'm with a woman who needs absolutely no introduction. I have Arlen Hamilton here, my dear friend, venture capitalist, best-selling author. I can like literally name all the things. I will just link her giant bio in the show notes, but she needs absolutely no introduction. But one of the favorite titles that she wears for me is a friend. And I literally was just, we. she just walked in into the studio here where we were set up here at the ROI Summit in Puerto Rico. And she's we're going to be judging the Schmilly Tank tomorrow together, which it actually originated last year. So we'll tell that story of how that originated. But Arlen and I were like, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so happy to see you. Her whole family's here. I love her whole family. And uh, we're starting to play catch up. And there was like too much real stuff happening. So I'm like, let's just turn the camera on and let's go. You guys have, if you have not if you've been living under a rock and you don't know Arlen Hamilton, please get off the show and like don't come back. <laughs> no. I'm just kidding. I would never say that. Please come back. Please come back. Please come back. But get to know Arlen. Arlen is so incredible. She is one of the most inspiring black women, just women in general that I know. She stands for so much that we all stand for at CEO School. Uh, there's a value system here that I love that we just just equally share. And we also have the love of the Dallas Mavericks together. Yeah. So we've got, we've got a lot in common. Um, but Arlen is here and I'm just excited to catch up. So I'll actually link in the show notes all the things that we talk about. She just just launched her book. There's a conference. I'll be speaking at Arlen's yes. conference, Your First Million. Uh, Your First Million. The book is out as well. We're here. She's speaking everywhere. She's literally got a giant entourage with her. You cannot even fully see it on set. But this woman <laughs> literally walks around with a uh, camera. My family. <laughs> it's your family. No, but it's, 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 it's awesome. It's so awesome to see you as a star as well. So um, I'll be linking all of that. And she's been on the show many times. Uh, and so we'll link all of that in the show notes as well. But hi, Arlen. Welcome, friend. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm so happy to see you. You look yeah. amazing. Thank you. You do too. Thank you. What's yeah. been happening? So first thing you said, you're like, it's busy. It's busy. I was going to say, billion looks good on you. Oh, thank you. Because <laughs> that's what you're going to be, right? Like you, they, no one can ever take that away from you, yes. right? That's just some, something most people can never achieve or attain. And you've seen it. You seen what that is. You built it with your own hands, and so like, I just think it's like being a doctor or something. Like it's like something no one can ever take, no matter what. No, it's I appreciate that reminder, and you're so always sweet to put me like give me that give me that love, and it is amazing. And honestly, it's it's you forget like I feel like no matter what how much success you have, what's really interesting about just being ambitious and a go like mm -hmm. you you hit a milestone and then it almost quickly disappears and you're like here's the next milestone that you're ready to achieve but beyond I think there was a lot of lessons that I learned in building my first billion dollar business um yeah <laughs> my first billion my dollar first well you know what I'm, uh, I'm on to building the next one love it um and this time going for a deca corn so but we'll do that on your show okay. this next time okay. so I know we're going to be meeting in LA talking about yes. all the things but today's about you Okay. Today's about you. So okay. tell me all the things. My friend says she's really busy. She says that she's never met anyone who's busier than herself. Yeah. And I truly will say that, that there's yeah. not a lot of women that can do all the things. What's happening this year? Because you're like, this year is yeah. just. This year is just, I used to say, like, I don't know anybody, anyone who's busier than I am. And that's not like a badge of no, honor. Yeah. It's just a, just a thing, right? But like this year, it's only a few days in. But my goodness, it's just kind of taking a new level. And it's because I wanted it to. I wanted to go after, like you said, go after bigger, better, brighter things. But to do that, <laughs> you you know, there's a lot of um, there's a lot to manage. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, all, I still do what I always did, which is make sure that at least one day a week I'm doing nothing. Oh, I love that. Like nothing. Right. And I also think about it in sprints. 
So the reason I can do this at this level is like, I know I'm going to the event essentially, like the event, and then we'll take a little bit of a break after like the a week, like two weeks after, and then we'll get back going because you can't do this all year. You can't, I love that you, you know, but, and I would say like, and that's what I do feel like the more successful you become, like honestly, the busier you get, because the opportunities also flow in a different direction as well. Mm -hmm. I have those conversations every day with my team, with my spouse, with my like, you know, why I'm doing all the things after getting to like, you know, I don't have to do anything. But I I do feel like, especially for those, I mean, I'm first generation immigrant. Um, You know, you, you know, your story is so incredible of how, you know, you stand for so much for underrepresented founders. Like, we don't just take that opportunity for granted and we seize opportunity. And so it becomes really hard and, and you become successful, but then there's more opportunities. Like success breeds success. So yes, yeah. I'm not surprised that this year is your busiest yet. And I yeah. will also tell you that I guarantee you next year when we catch up on the show, <laughs> you'll be like, Sarah, this is the year. Yeah. Because now you're gonna get your first conference under the belt, the second book out of the way. Yeah. And then there's gonna be the TV show next, the this yeah. next, the that next, because success just breeds success. And it's important to not take every single opportunity yes. that comes at you. Yes. That's something that I learned from a few people before it started, you know, before it got really crazy. But it's hard. It's hard to say no. It is. But it, it's important strategically Super. that you say yes to very specific things and you mm-hmm. may get it wrong and be okay with that. Yeah. And like, it's that FOMO thing. Like, I just don't, tr- I don't uh, trade in FOMO. Ooh, I just don't know how to that. do it. <laughs> because it's like, I'm like, wherever I am, that's where the party is. Yeah. That, you know what I mean? Because there's, it's so funny. I think, you know, we we were at South by. We Wherever spoke- I am, that's where the party <laughs> is. I like that. We spoke at South by together, right? Yes. And at South by, it's like, what, 100,000 plus people. There's something going on every second of every minute of yes. every day. And no matter what you're doing, the cool, you could be doing the coolest thing. Somebody's tweeting or texting you. There's some other cool thing happening. Mm-hmm. There's this VIP. But then when you get to the VIP, there's a VVIP. <laughs> there's always some level, right? Yeah. And so I just decided a few years ago. Yeah, I wherever I am, that is the best place that. to be. And I think that for everybody, we should think that if you're sitting at home right now and like, you know, you're just chilling, you're listening, you're learning, you're getting ready for work, whatever it is, taking care of family, that's the best party in town. I love that. What a great reminder. And and with that, you're still super busy, but you said you take that time every week. That's something that, you know, I would say that's the right people around you will also teach you that. And at, it's taken me so many years to understand why it's important. Mm-hmm. And finally, 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 Fridays are my day. That's the day. And if it's, you know, it's if it's not the whole day and something has to come up, but I try so hard to protect all of that time, yeah. right? Um, but Fridays are my day where that's my absolute, like, my creative day. I could do whatever I feel like day. Mm-hmm. So if it's a veg out day, if it's, you know, um, taking care of all my errands because I did, like didn't get time to do it or if it's a creative day or if I want to come into the studio because I feel like it, it's my whatever I feel like Yeah, day. I love that. Yeah, love and what's that. your day? Oh, I'm just, usually I hope that I'm at home when yeah. that day comes around mm-hmm. and so I'll just watch TV, catch up on General Hospital because it's every weekday so I have to catch up on it. I'll hang with my wife. We'll, we love watching movies and we love just talking and catching up because we're both so busy and yeah. like just nothing, just Nothingness. nothing, like the, the most mundane thing. Um, but it helps me reset and then I'm just ready to go. Oh my God. That's like every weekend. So sorry. That was my one day. I, I, I see in my mind, all I think about is work. So I'm even like Monday through Friday. I'm like, oh yeah, my one day, my one day is Friday that I yeah. don't, that I don't, don't get to work. But weekend time, Arlen, like I literally need like I can go all week long, go from event to whatever, fly city to city, be on camera, put them, put on the show. Mm-hmm. But the second it's like Friday night, like when I'm home with my kids yeah. until that time, I need a full pajama day. So the girls and I will literally do pajama day where we will like wake up and try not to get out of our pajamas. Yeah. And so yeah. But I need, I'm such an, I'm an introvert. So I don't know if you actually know this about me. Have we talked about this? No. So I'm an introverted extrovert. So mm-hmm. I can definitely give the extrovert energy but my love language is quality time. I need that one-on-one stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm an like intimate, intimate setting girl. And when I give all this energy, I need to veg out. So like I, my thing is Suits right now. So I'm like literally binge watching. I binge watch like all of like oh, Ugly show, Betty and show. Suits. Yeah, I do love Suits too. Yeah. <laughs> you know this, yes. No, but Suits the show. You should have a line. Do you have a line of Suits? 
I don't have a line of suits. You should have I, a line of suits for women. I support some amazing female founder brands. Shout out to Dust to Dust and Argent and some others that like oh. I like religiously wear. But uh, girl, I don't got time to start a suit brand. There's, well, at least partner with them. They do everything and yes. it's your style. I would love to do a, a bigger collaboration yeah. um, on a suit line. But yeah, I wear a lot, a lot of colored suits. And I've been be wearing good. them for years and years and years. Okay, okay going back to- You heard it here to, first, folks. Yes, no, Arlen's <laughs> idea. Arlen always- pushes me to to like yeah. just keep going keep doing we haven't even caught up on and we can't do it on the show right now we're gonna do it afterwards on the next uh the tech venture we that, have to. that we're back at it sal and i are back at it we're um just grinding away building the team we've been building in stealth for the last six months we're gonna announce the company um in march so Ooh. probably this month when the when the episode airs i don't know exactly where it's airing so we'll have those conversations um later on today um you know while while we're offline yeah. but 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 we we want we're no there's no gatekeeping i just like public publicly i'm not talking about it right now yeah. but there's legal stuff there's all there's, kinds of there's stuff there's no there's no gatekeeping here arlen what is happening in your world you just launched another another and another one, a best-selling another book. One. Another one. Yeah. Oh, it's called Your First Million. Yes. I just launched it January 1st. Um, yeah. <laughs> I had It's About Damn Time in 2020. Yeah. I think right when people needed it. It was about resilience and grit and perseverance. One of my favorite, favorite books. Thank you. And it had humor to it, too. Yeah. It had all kinds of stuff to it. I really felt I got to know you mm. in that book. Yeah. That's what I was hoping for. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And people really like reacted to it well so I was told I could write about whatever I wanted on the next book and so I got a book deal for the second book the, both both of them were the book deal and on this one I was like you know what I want to help create a thousand millionaires in the next decade and this book is the kickoff you can do I feel like you're already creating over a thousand yeah I want to do and I so I hear people say I want to do a thousand I want to do a million millionaires yeah what I'm saying is I want to really be the reason like the kickoff point and track it Ooh. So to be able to look back and say that a thousand millionaires started from the learnings and the book and the uh, event that we're doing together, all of that, like we're going to track it. And people who reach that status will go across the stage each year at Your First Million, million Live. Oh, my goodness. OK, so tell, tell us about Your First Million in the book. The book. So the the event as well, or just both. The book? Both. Let's let's start with the book because I want I want to yeah. get I want to link it to the show notes and get everyone to to get their copies. So tell tell us first about this book. Yeah. So the book is uh, meant to be a guide, like a um, a blueprint for people. Whether you're just getting started, you're working for someone else, you don't you know can't rub two pennies together because that's where I was just a few years ago, or you may be on your way. You may be at five or six figures already and you need that extra push and you also need the why are we doing this like what is this about is it about material things is it about buying the next thing the shiny object or is there a movement and a community that's being built and i think the mindset shift is what i spent about a third of the book on i kick off the book by telling how i went from being homeless to buying janet jackson's prize truck at auction and tell that story to kind of tell you where you can go from to. And then, you know, I might have a book in the future called Your Next Million. We'll see. But oh. it's really meant to just kind of get everyone in that mindset of, oh, that can be me. This isn't a story about somebody else. This can be me. I can be part of that 1,000. And maybe it'll be more, you know? I think I think 100%. Yeah. It's going to be a lot yeah. more. It's getting a really good reaction. Like, I was surprised, to be honest, by, like, people are like walking up to me why are like why are you surprised arlen come on let's i don't know because it's surprised? not exactly like the first book where the first book was a lot of like anecdotes and a lot of like you know it's kind of entertaining as well as educational this one's more like like we're about to get this paper and we're, we're going to start, yeah. start a movement i like it and so uh, you know a lot of people i wanna, can be both i want yeah. the stories and i want to get yeah. shit done so for the, the fact that people are coming up to me at my book stops and in tears or they're just riled up and they're just like i already read the book read it like in six hours read it you know listen to it in six hours read it overnight and i'm ready it's me i didn't think i could do this but now i believe 
Like that is everything. And that's only a few weeks in. Oh my goodness. It's literally two weeks in. Yes. Congratulations on the launch. And then you're touring everywhere. So tell me about the mm-hmm. book tour. Yeah, so I, we've been to, New. we kicked off in New York. Okay, let me t- tell you about New York real yeah, quick. Yeah, tell me everything. So we go, we start in New York just because, there, you know, we want to do a few things there. And we had a great um, book stop itself. It was amazing. Then I also was on ABC News Prime. So it was like, broadcast across the country digitally. Then we walk into the New York Stock Exchange because I'm supposed to do an interview there. By the way, I want to get you on the same place that I did this. I'm sure you've already done it, but um, I'm supposed to do an interview there. And then we walk in and every single screen at the New York Stock Exchange has Backstage Capital, my venture fund, the logo emblazoned across it. Love it. And And people are like asking me, did you pay for that or what? I'm like, I had no idea it was going to happen. And they, the funny thing is, like, they had a lot of stuff going on that day. It wasn't like it was, they didn't have to do that. But they were like, we're celebrating your book launch and we're celebrating the work you've done. And they just had it up there for like an hour. And we just, of course, took every picture we could. And <laughs> it I, was just a I moment. I, I, I felt like I was part of that moment from afar. I watched you online and I was screaming for it. I mean, Aww. as a friend, I'm also an investor in Backstage Capital yes. and all the things. And like, it is say it. It it is so awesome to see that. Like at the New York White Stock Exchange, I was going to the White Exchange. Oh my god. The New York White <laughs> Exchange. Actually very accurate. Oh my goodness. The New- really I, accurate. Let's keep I don't it even know there. we should we should keep it in here if I were not yeah, kidding. I accidentally just said the New York White Exchange. Okay. It's very true. It's very true. It's very systematic. It's very male, too. It is super male. Really male. Pale male and stale is the New York Stock Exchange. We'll say that correctly. My brain is so funny. Okay, but yeah, and when I saw your face there and all of the love that you were getting, it's it is about damn time. It's like all hey. the things. It is about damn time that we see women like you up there, and it was a super super proud friend moment, and I'm really happy. Like, Thank it's you. really awesome. Thank you. And I felt your your true genuine like the surprise. Yeah. And that's fun. Yeah. There's not a lot of things that surprise us anymore at this stage. It's so true. Like, or that impress. Yeah. Or, you know, it is because there's just so much coming at us. I remember watching like Quinta Brunson do her interview with Oprah and she was just so calm. And I think most people are like, oh, she's not appreciative. It's like she has so much happening for her all at once. How how could she in the in life take all that? No. and understand it and process it. It's I think what's gonna happen is like I've always been like maybe six to twelve months behind of like, oh, that happened? I can't believe that happened. I think it's that it does, and that's what happens for me too sometimes. Like I definitely do like freak out in moments like right after or before, but I think that the true reflection like sets in later where you're like, wow, yeah, that that yeah. actually happened. Yeah. And then it's, it's also easy for us to like not make things a big deal, right? And mm-hmm. like we, we downplay things no matter what, no matter how cool it is, whatever it is, like we will, not make it a big deal because it's us and we're like used to doing that for ourselves so like for the women that you know and for those that are listening like we tend to do that for ourselves for everything but even at the most successful level we tend to do that we downplay all of the all of the wins all the successes all of these we downplay it but it's what like why it's important to surround yourself with awesome people and awesome women because what did you just you just reminded me that I'm a billion dollar CEO uh-huh right if it were me yeah. let me just say if it were me like I used to say this to Tony Braxton when I was working for her I would sing all day every day no matter what I would never speak if I could sing right so if I had a billion dollar company you would not be able to talk to me without me starting that. Like cons- <laughs> the people that go to Harvard. They would say, yes, what would you like for lunch, ma'am? Well, you know, as a billion dollar uh, founder, I would like the salmon. Oh my That's goodness. how it'd be every single day. You couldn't shut me up about it. I love it. And you say that, right? You say that, but then wait, you say that, <laughs> but that's what's so great. And that's why I just, I wanted to remind her, it's important to like the company, you are the company you keep. And that is important yeah. because your friends and the right people around you, it's important. We need that. We need that confidence around us because that's what actually builds our confidence is the people that are around us. So thank you for that reminder. And I'm so glad it was such an awesome, magical moment. Yeah, that's amazing. Okay, so book happened. I mean, the you know the New York Stock Exchange celebrated. Everyone celebrating. It's only two weeks in. But now you're planning your first million live of the conference. Tell us everything. Oh my goodness. So 
your first million, I mean, there has to be a place for us to convene, right? If we're starting this movement. So I decided um, I'm going to do my first large scale event. There will be up to 4,000 people Yeah, there. large scale. That is like extra, extra, super size large scale. So here's the like a really cool part. Um, I don't know if you saw the Emmys or not, but this is happening where the Emmys mm-hmm. are held. And so I watched the Emmys the other night and I was like, wow, that's a lot of seats. <laughs> So I'm just standing in front of those seats a lot. <laughs> but also I was so proud because I mean, and and then I wanted it to be like this elevated experience for everybody, no matter what kind of ticket you have. And so that theater is just beautiful. <clears throat> that theater is just so beautiful and um, it's just going to be amazing. So we have you, you're, you said yes to speaking, yes, which is amazing. I will be there and I'm going to be there. When, and when I say yes to things, like I genuinely am saying yes in this phase in my life. And I'm so excited to be there. Yeah, you got to be there from April 9th through the 12th because we have some surprises for, for speakers too. Okay. Yeah. All right. I will be there for you. That's amazing. And then um, if anybody from your group wants to join us, if they type in the word Sunira. Okay. Let's do CEO school. Might CEO be an easy, school? Yeah, let's do CEO okay. school. Might be an easier spell. Okay. Yeah. Then they'll get a deep discount because they're friends of yours. Thank you. CEO okay. Well, school. I will be there, and I want everybody to come. We yeah. all need to be millionaires. Like this yeah. is this is where we're. This is our vibe. This is yeah. what it's about. Who else is coming? So Gary's coming. Gary, Gary V will yes. be there. Yes, he said yes first. I think he said yes really fast. Um, we have Rich Paul, who's LeBron's agent mm-hmm. and Adele's husband, but and more importantly, what he does, <laughs> his work. <laughs> but I'm still freaking out about that. Um, then we have, um, who else do we have? We have Dean Forbes, who is a black man who used to be homeless himself in the UK. Now he's over a multi-billion dollar company. He has an incredible story. So he's flying all the way from England to be part of it and spending the whole time there. Um, we have Rachel Rogers, yeah. who's doing this event. Um, okay, Issa Rae. I know. I saw that. I'm such a huge fan of hers. Yeah. We have to like, I want to meet her. You will meet her. Okay. I really want to meet you her. You will meet her. So she- Would um, you bring her on the show? She's doing um, uh, an evening with Issa Rae. So she's going to, it's going to be a very special moment on April 10th at the Peacock Theater, an evening with. And then on April 11th, we'll have the entire programming. So it'll be back to back, just like- it's a it's a Gems. big event. Like I will say, as your first conference girl, you know how to this like is big, yeah. you like usually like I have not done a conference yet. Every year I promise my audience we're gonna do a conference. Yeah. I say I'm gonna do it. I say I'm gonna do it, and then I'm like, oh my god, this is so much work. Yeah. And then you really have to carve out all your time to promote your first conference. Mm-hmm. And so with all the other things, they always take precedence from a you know it just it just requires a lot of time especially getting the first one off the ground anytime that you embark on any new pie like you're like here's like the first of something it's going to be the hardest yes like, it's going to be the most amount of work it's going to take the stuff off the like you have a lot to do and whatever you estimate you need to like double or triple the cost double that yeah and then triple the time too yep. And, so, and I've been told by people who put on big events that there's always going to be this black swan event that happens right before. So I'm preparing myself. So like something is going to go wrong. I hope it's not, this is not wood, but I hope it's not too bad. But there's like something. So I'm like, okay, am I going to lose a vendor? I'm going to, you know, it's like the, you know, weather is going to be crazy or something. It's, it's going to be great. Something's going to happen, but I'm just prepared for that. I also should mention that Mrs. Yeah. Sheila Johnson will be there. The first black woman billionaire in the country. Wow. Co-founder of BET will be speaking at your first million. And okay, you ready for this? Yes. Who's closing it out with a, with a full scale arena level uh, music performance? TLC. Oh my goodness. This is <laughs> did, did you not know that? You no, know that? I didn't know that. <laughs> okay, but you are literally how did you how are you pulling this off? Like truly, like this is and then you weren't just like when I say like you're you're literally you're like go big, go home. Yeah. So usually the first level, even when I was like, oh, I'm gonna do the conference this next year, I was like, you know, 250 women. Yeah. yeah. 300 women I'm happy with as like our first first yeah, level 500. Great- Everyone's pushing like, oh, we can do more. Let's get to a thousand. I'm like, no, like under 500. I feel comfortable with. Let's do that. Let's sell out. And I'm happy with that. And here you are. And the amount of work that it'll take for a 500 person conference. And you're, you're, you're going to do a thousand, 4,000 people. Logist- and then you're going to do it over a span of days. 
Yeah. This is Three this days. is monumental. Yeah. I'll tell you why a couple of reasons I decided it might help someone. Yeah. So first of all, if you have a 300 person event, that's incredible. If you have a 500, 1000 person event, absolutely incredible. And I would be proud to have that. For me, because of the work that I do with Backstage Capital, that's every day of my life. And the, because of the work I do with Higher Runner, which is my very recruiting platform and other things that I'm working on, I thought, you know, I really want to put this event on the map. And it's not something that I want to kind of dip a toe in. Mm -hmm. I want it to be like a major part of what I do. And so I have to like challenge myself. And if I can pull that off, right? Remember 10 years ago, I'm like, if I could invest in black and brown people and women, what would happen? Yeah, That's how I thought about now I've invested more than 200 people. So you have to kind of go for it. So this time I was like, everybody was telling me, you have to do a ballroom at a hotel. You have to do a thousand people or fewer like you can't do this and so I was like okay cute thank you for the advice and then I was just like okay what what's a place that I would be super proud to walk into and say that this we we had ownership of this and the Peacock Theater in LA Live next door where the Lakers play where the Emmys are held I was like that so we went to tour it and I looked around I got the different numbers of like how how many people could be seated yeah and different configurations and I said this is what I want. And I want it all. I'm going to take it all. I want it. I want I it because it. I'm not afraid to fail in public. Oh, I'm not afraid to look bad. And I thought if I can set that standard for myself and we just aim at it and aim be- beyond it, we're going to get we're going to go further than most people dare to because we're just attempting it. Oh, my goodness. I could just. Oh, this is everything. <laughs> it's so true. We were literally just I've been having this conversation about failure all day to day we are so afraid to just be bold and just and because we're so afraid of what people are going to think if we put it out there and like if it's three thousand people you got three thousand people there hundred percent you know and we have to get comfortable with that hundred percent like you know thankfully we are already um close to the two thousand mark um when we still have months out which is incredible and so i want up to we're going to have up to four thousand but i saw uh, tony robbins had his event his 60th birthday there and he had 3,000 people in the audience. And it looked incredible. I was like, that's 3,000? If we if we get anywhere close to that, that's amazing. But I really do think like the every day it gets a little bit like more real for people. And so now in the streets, I'm meeting people and they're like, I'm bringing my whole crew. We're, we're flying in from Baltimore. We're da 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 da. It's so accessible too. Like it's such yeah. an accessible conference. Like yes. there's a lot of places like if you like, if you travel, one, get in the room. I, let's just talk about like why it's important to get in the room. I think this is a huge part of like business and life is not done behind a screen. As much as like we can, sh- we share all this content, we consume the content, real connections are made. We met online first. Yeah. So Arlen and I actually first digitally met. Mm-hmm. However, it wasn't, I mean, we kicked, we like definitely had sparks flying yeah, we over hit it Zoom, off. Yeah. right? But it wasn't until we met in person that we were just like, oh my God, we literally stand for all the same That's things. where like deals are made. Yes. That's where like true, oh, okay, I, I can look you in the yes. eye. That's where things are happening. Things are happening in person. Yeah. And, and it's not just about being inspired, it's about action. And you got to get into the room. Like I really do, I, I feel like, we don't preach enough that you really are the company you keep. And if you want to scale up in whatever you want to scale up in life, then that level of company has to like, you've got to, either your people are going to grow with you or you're going to outgrow them. Mm-hmm. And you've got to keep going. If that that's And that's been our path. Like it's not about let, leaving people behind or letting people, it's about bringing your friends up and bringing them to the conference too. Yeah. But get in the room. Yeah. Stop sitting. It's not going to happen behind the screen. Like, I mean, you know this. I mean, I coach so many women all the time, meet so many entrepreneurs entrepreneurs and recently there's a lot of conversation around like I see so many women dabbling in tech and I love that so much but they're struggling with getting you know the funding off the ground or finding their CTO and all the things and I'm like well when was the last time you went to like a a tech meetup yeah I was like just when did you go to the last tech meetup and they're like what tech meetup and I'm like literally just look up the tech meetups and you want to build a tech company you want to go find a CTO you Mm want to go where the tech people are I'll tell you what when I was I talk about being homeless a lot because it was a big part of my life but when we were sleeping out of a hotel in Pearland Texas in 2013-14 or 2014-15 I first of all 
I found my way to, like, I went to, like, College Station or somewhere to, to go to a tech event. Like, I didn't have any money. I just put it together. I figured it out and got there so that I could meet someone. And I actually ended up meeting someone who helped me so much in that early, in those early days. And then I said, well, if I'm going to be broke in Texas, I might as well be in Austin. So at least I can show up places. So we moved to Austin for a few months just so I could, like, serendipitously run into people just so I can go to the free meetups and be around people because you just never know. So it's not like it's something that you have to wait for to, you. oh, I have this amount of money or I'm this far along. It's how you get that far along is to be in those spaces. I mean, if you're not inspired like by Arlen's story, I mean, I, I, I would love for you to, I mean, literally going from homeless not even a decade ago, mm-hmm. a decade ago. Yeah, it was, it was uh, 20, September of 2015 was when I stopped living at the airport. So less than, what, nine years ago? I can't even do the math right now. I think it's like eight eight years and three months ago. And you have to, I mean, share, share, like if you could take us back for the audience that hasn't heard a little bit about your story, just a high level of how did you go from being at that point to what's like the quick version of your success story? <laughs> I, well, I, yeah, I, I was in my mid thirties, was still struggling, just trying to figure things out. Um, and, but I knew that I wanted to start this fund because I had originally thought about starting a company and it, I, to be, to be fair, like I wasn't passionate about the company. It was like, I just want to start a company because I want to, right. But then I realized, oh, like most venture funding doesn't go to me, black gay woman in this country and all of my friends and all of my peers and so then I said, well, what if I instead of tried to instead of trying to raise a million dollars to for my company, what if I tried to raise a million dollars to invest in a few companies that were like me, the founders were like me, and so that kind of started everything. And then it took like three years to get my first twenty five thousand, and I just struggled because um, I had been struggling before. I wasn't. I think some people think that I like was doing okay, and then I said, let me do this, and then I went like went for it, and I put my stuff in storage and. No, <laughs> there was no storage. There was no to put your stuff away. You know, it was like, oh, I'm I'm actually just sleeping on the on the floor of the San Francisco airport because I didn't want to sleep on the ground. I'll tell you this, like I don't talk about this too much, but I decided um, decided to stay at the airport because I didn't have anywhere to go, and I didn't want to sleep outdoors because I thought that would break my spirit to a point that I don't think I could come back from. And maybe I could have, but that's the conversation I had with myself. I was like, if I can um, at least be indoors and there are people around me and I feel safe, then I can keep trying. So as bad as it was, and it was bad, believe me, um, especially for a germaphobe, really, really bad. But as bad as it was, it was like the it was like kind of like the lowest point I could get without just like giving up. Wow. I mean, I honestly don't even have any words besides. It's so incredible. Your story is so inspiring and you are not just going to have the, Carlos actually just brought out tissue for me. He's like, oh. he's like, he's like you know, she's just gonna, no. she's gonna start tearing he knows. up. He knows it, he knows it. No, I, I'm, I'm, I feel like the story still every time makes me, it just all of the goosebumps rise up and it is inspiring. And I hope it leaves you super, super inspired because there is like, there's no way, like literally even being at the bottom, there's like nowhere else to go but up. Yeah. So even wherever you are stuck or you feel you're stuck, and it could be whether you're, you know, in that early phases of the business, the midpoints of the business, and it could even be you're at the million, like the, even at that point, still keep, it's look up. Right. Like it's important to keep looking up. And that's where I'm at right now. Like I feel like I've achieved a lot in my life, but there's so much left for me to go. Like we, Sal and I talk all the time, like of, you know, what are we supposed to do? We're like in our like, you know, thirties, like, like, what are we, we're like, we have to go build another company. Like what else, what else are we going to do? And this time around, and it's not about the, the freedom of dollar anymore. And that's incredible to be able to have that. And the, And we can talk about this so much of what the freedom of dollar means. And I'm sure that's in your book. Like it's not, it's not about the, it's not about the money in the bank account. It's the freedom that comes with it. That's the book. That's the book. Yeah. It's options, freedom. It's options. It's freedom. And but once you even check that off, like there's other freedoms, right? And as you can become, it's freedom of time. Mm -hmm. That's also super important. And recently I've been seeing a lot of it's the, in in my freedom formula, I call it the freedom formula. It's freedom of influence. Mm. And I actually never thought that like, I do feel like our, when you like you your voice does carry power and that you can influence 
in the right way. And I want to shape the world to to the, the way that I believe that the world should be shaped. And if we look around the world right now, there's currently no women at the top in the world right now, whether it's politics, whether it's, you know, th- the number of women CEOs, all the things. And I 100% believe that the world would look differently if leadership looked differently as well. But that's not just going to happen through freedom of dollar. It will also come with your influence. And that didn't really like check in for me until last year where I felt, or it was two years ago that we hit the the you know billing milestone. I ended up exiting the company. I sold the company. I still I sold parts of the company, so I still am a huge owner in stock. So it doesn't mean that I'm a billionaire selling the company. But we did really, really well and we made we made 30 millionaires. And you know, mm. we wrote over 200 checks in the hundreds of thousands for our our team. Like That's so and cool. so like we just we made hundreds of millions of dollars for our investors. Like lots of wealth created. All the things that you want to do like as a founder. But I felt like this component of this influence piece and I'm like we do have a superpower and we are we are one of the first we are the first of our kind to do what we're doing and it is important that people like us have also have voices in the room and i believe that for for all of us and i i think that the freedom i think that's how i've tapped into these like three parts of freedom now of like why am i i'm not chasing i'm not chasing i just want to ensure i live my life with all of the freedoms mm-hmm. you have a certain um aura about you today Really? Like that different than a year ago. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've, I've been well rested for a, uh, yeah, a year yeah, too. Yeah, because you're not running like this multi. Yes. yes. But it, yeah, it's like a it's like a confidence and a um, confidence. Yeah, it's like a sureness in self. You know, thank you for pointing that out. And I will I will say it's also because I don't have anybody also telling me no. Mm-hmm. So like no matter what, even as I was running the company, I still reported into investors and boards, boards and, and all yeah. the all the stuff. And it like, was don't great. call it board for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> and now I sit on boards too. Uh, so no, 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 I'm no, on boards of companies. True. But it's accountability and it's soup. It was it's it was critical and it's really important. And I do believe that there's like there is the path for that. But also when you uncap, like when that when you know the the you know you kind of have a magic wand like when it comes off. Mm. And now I can truly, I've done the things. I think the difference that you're feeling in my energy is I had something to prove before. Mm. And so I always walked into a room with without knowing it, without whatever of like, I have something to prove because I hadn't, like I didn't have anything on paper, yeah. right? Or like yeah. accomplished or like, yeah. here's my res- here's my credentials. But I do think that what this has allowed, it's like, I not that I needed to prove myself before, but I think that's just how I am Personally, as a person that yeah. you have that chip on the shoulder. Mm-hmm. And I do believe that like that chip is, I don't need to prove myself to anyone anymore. Mm-hmm. And now I realize that, and I wish I knew that. So I did not need to have an exit or like raise the cow, do all the things that we did, the fortunes for all the stuff did not define who I was. It was the mentality. Mm-hmm. But when I now got to let go of that mentality, I don't need to prove myself. And if I can give that advice to wherever you're starting off, you're not doing this. Don't do it to prove anything to anyone. There's a nice fire that I had because, you know, you kind of want to give that, you know, like where I had old bosses that didn't believe in the idea. I pitched the idea to them. I had a million investors say no. So you have that, some of that fire is good in your belly, but really check in with yourself on your why. It needs to go beyond that. It should be for that why, that greater reason, because you don't need to prove it for anybody else. And I kind of wish I knew that earlier. So that's that's the difference. That's the difference. Oh my God, I love this conversation. Arlen, okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna listen to the book. I can't wait to get my hands on it. And then we're gonna all be at your first million live. Yes. I will be speaking. I'm super excited to be there and just bring all of this energy um, to all of the people, and I, I'm just super excited. What's it's all the things that are happening? Give me an update on the on if people want to like, you know, you obviously also have a fund. So we never got to talk about backstage capital. You know how it'll be how- in the first of all backstage will be like in full effect at the event. Yes. So a lot of representation. A lot of our founders will be there. We'll talk about it on stage. It's all there. If you go to yourfirstmillion dot live, okay. that's where you can get a ton of information. Okay, great. A lot of stuff, and also don't forget to use CEO school for. For a deep CEO discount for a deep discount because you're friends with Samir thank you oh my goodness always a pleasure I will continue the conversation with you yes. always and forever thanks so much for ha- being back on the show today we'll, I'll be at the conference and I know our audience genuinely I loved today's show so I know they love today's show and if you love today's show 
screenshot it, tag us on Instagram, share all the things. Arlen and I are both, it's Arlen was here is her handle. You know where to find me at Sarah Madani and leave us a review. That's how we grow. This show only grows with you. And I'm so honored to be a voice in your ear every single week. And I, I'm just, I'm just feeling all the feels right now. So I'm going to go and like use these tissues up. <laughs> I'll see you guys next week at Thank CEO you. School. Thank you for tuning into today's show. If you loved it, leave us a review. We are so proud to bring you authentic conversations, game changer expert guests, and valuable content on and offline. The best compliment you can give us is by screenshotting today's show and tagging us on Instagram at CEO School and at Sanira Madani. We are obsessed with swag, so don't be surprised if we want to send you some. Thanks for tuning into class today. And remember, nothing bad happens when women make more money.